This is a quick video to show some of the major upgrades and animation of Krita 5 compared to Krita 3.0. I've also created a fast version of this for those that want to see it at a sped up time but don't have that ability in YouTube. The animation and timeline dockers have been uh, combined so it's much easier to use. In particular the buttons for um, deleting and creating new keyframes as well as the transport controls are easily available. In addition, the context menus are much more complete as you uh, look at the different parts within the animation docker. Krita can now um, output to video. Um, you will have to install the FFmpeg, um, but that's described in the documentation. You can output uh, things such as the GIF, um, MPEG, um, and a number of different formats. The keyframes are easier to understand now. If it's solid, then you have a drawing on the keyframe. If it's hollow, then there is uh, a blank keyframe there. If it has uh, hash marks, then you're showing the active keyframe. Now you're not only able to uh, copy keyframes, you're also able to clone them. So as an example, as I'm looking at this first keyframe, notice that it has the hash marks. There's no other keyframe that is like that. If I click on this uh, keyframe, though, we notice that this has hash marks, but this other one does as well. So this one is a clone of this other one. The horizontal line in the timeline is showing you that the image is held. So as we see, as I scrub along here, we see that this image is being held until we hit uh, the blank keyframe. The gray lines above the timeline is actually showing you which images are in the cache. In addition, this uh, resolution button at the bottom shows you memory information, so the cache uh, locations and the memory show you about the usage on the computer. For organizational purposes, you can assign colors to different keyframes, and the onion skins can also be filtered by the frame color. This little button in the timeline docker allows you to zoom in the time that you're looking at. The scroll bar, if you drag up and down, also allows you to zoom in and zoom out, as well as scroll left and right. In addition to the animation timeline docker, there's also an animation curve docker that allows you by default to uh, animate opacity, but if you have a transformation mask, um, then you can also animate position, scaling, and rotation. The animation curves uh, docker has the ability to add and remove keyframes, to change them from Bezier, linear, or constant interpolation, to change the connectivity, or over here you can zoom in and out of the range. You can zoom left and right or zoom the regions up. Also you can come over to this region over here, the values region, and zoom in and out. The documentation for the uh, curves docker explains the different controls that you can do, but here are some that I can show you. Um, if we click on the eye, we can hide or show a particular line, but if I press shift, it will toggle all of the other um, channels on and off. Another very convenient thing that I can do is if I double click on a keyframe, I can actually select all of them within a particular uh, time position. One other point to mention as we talk about the animation curves and the transformation mask or the transform mask. So in order to move things, you can't just move the paint layer. You have to have a transform mask. Um, notice here that I actually have it applied to a group, so you can apply it to groups. If I wanted to apply it to a single layer, I just right click, add, transform mask and then I can uh, use the animation curves to uh, scale or rotate or translate. When you're working with the animation curves and uh, manipulating the transform mask it is possible to go and select individual points and move them around to affect what's happening on the transform. However, it's much more likely that you actually want to um, select the transform tool and just move that uh, object around on the screen. What you'll want to do in the curve graph though is to add and remove keyframes as well as change the interpolation type and the uh, junction points. 
The dot drop frames toggle button is needed in case your animation is a little too complex for your computer and it will drop frames in order to keep uh, the playback timing correct. Here's a couple of quick reminders. If it's been a while since you've used animation in Krita or you haven't done it yet, um, when you first bring up uh, an image, you can have the background and it can have a color on it. That's okay, but the rest of the layer should be transparent. I'm going to hide this background and create a new layer right now. Now, the first thing that you want to notice is that this uh, layer here is not animated. So if I draw on here, I'm not actually creating an animation frame. Also notice that I wasn't even paying attention to what uh, frame I was at. So really the first thing that you want to do is actually create a frame. Now I'm, since I've already drawn something, I'm going to duplicate that frame and it's actually created a frame right here. However, in general, it's a better practice that whenever you create a new frame, um, go ahead and create a blank uh, frame here. That means it will be animatable before you do any of your drawing. So let's take a look at a couple of other interesting features here. The onion skin button will allow you to hide or show the onion skins. This more menu here allows you to set the clip start and end as well as the frame rate. And this interesting button here, if I push the uh, drop down here, we see that you've got auto key blank and auto key duplicate. That's very helpful. So what this does is this allows you to automatically blank or duplicate the, the image. So for example here, I've got a drawing. I'm going to go to frame six here. And now I'm going to notice again we have this set to um, auto, well let's set it to auto duplicate. What I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to draw on this line here, on this frame here, and it gives me uh, a copy of the original frame pr plus the additional drawing elements. Now if I use instead the um, auto key blank, when I draw this time it will erase the old one and replace it with the new drawing. Here's a quick tip about selecting multiple uh, keyframes. Uh, I can drag select to select multiple keyframes and then I can move them together if I want or do things like that. Notice though that I don't want to start my selection on an existing keyframe. So for example here if I do that I'm actually just dragging that keyframe. So a good thing to do is like for example look in the background or even in any timeline and select. Start your selection at some place where a keyframe doesn't actually exist. One other thing about the selection that might be helpful is if I right click here I can update the playback range so that will then set the start and end time based upon the current selection. This button here will remove keyframes but it won't move anything around. If I right click I can still do that but I can also remove a frame and pull which will move all of the other keyframes to the left. So for example you can see frames 15, 18, 21, and 24 have keyframes and so when I click here remove and pull the keyframe at 12 is removed and all the uh, keyframes after that are moved to the left. If you're used to animating on the twos or threes or something like that, you can easily add multiple keyframes. I right click and for keyframes I insert multiple keyframes and then I can establish uh, the number of keyframes that I want and what the frame timing is. So that about wraps it up with the uh, uh, video on the major improvements in animation in Krita 5. Uh, you can look at some of my earlier videos. They're still relevant to show you about onion skins or um, just using animation if you're uh, not familiar with animation. Um, and I will try to create another video which just uh, shows the basics of animation in Krita a little bit later. I hope you enjoy uh, using Krita and doing animation.